Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Antiheroes Anonymous. Welcome for the first time. If it's your first time dun first time dungeoning with us. <laughs> yeah. What was I going to say here? <laughs> here, it's your first time joining us. Anyways, um, yeah, there will be announcements. There will be a recap. But first, Nick, some player introductions. Sure. Hi, I'm Nick. I play Ember's White Ash, a Tabaxi Sun Soul Monk. Hi, I'm Kay. I play Lady Elwynn Amaloops, who is an elvish circle of the land druid. Hi, I'm Melissa, and I play Teppy, who is a pixie bard. Hi, I'm Zach, and I play Vert, the Changeling Armor Artificer. Thank you, everyone. Um, so, those announcements, we premiere our episodes. Dungeons and Dragons show. Oh. <laughs> I'm all screwed up today. This is a Dungeons and Dragons show. <laughs> Oh, how did I get so off? Okay. Um, we premiere our episodes on YouTube every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Throughout the show, we use a variety of custom items, uh, custom magic items, custom monsters, all of that. So be aware of that as you're watching. The character portraits, which is, you'll see all over the layout, were drawn by a variety of artists. Uh, you can check out the description for links and information about who drew what. Um, so if you see something you like, check that out and go support them. Um... If you need a refresher on anything that's going on in the campaign, we have a campaign wiki at World Anvil. Um, you can also check our video description for links and information to about some uh, for links and information about Stop Asian Hate and Black Lives Matter. Um, finally, you can follow us on co-host at Antiheroes, and we just hope you enjoy the show. Share share with your friends and come back to watch some more. I can't talk today. <laughs> Alright, let's just roll the intro video so I don't have to anymore. Welcome back. Previously on Antiheroes Anonymous, the Silver Seekers are deep in preparations to break into Greymantle Penitentiary, high in the mountains of Sergil. Their aim is to find and free Basil Orenglass, Bert's father and the deposed king of Vagma, from his cell in the high security area of the prison. However, they don't yet know where that area is, nor what its defenses might be. To that end, they are consulting with a, with a local thieves guild known as the Clouder, which has supplied them with some basic info and set up a chat with Shay Hexwing, the only prisoner ever to escape from Mount Varengar alive. And so that is where we're going to pick up today's session. Um, I'm going to stop the theme right there. Uh, you may recall um, you spent basically a week in Amber Hearth while you were waiting for uh, the Clouder to get back to you with that information. Um, during that time, Torin and the recruits to the Silver Seekers uh, returned to the Keep, successful from their first mission. Mm -hmm. um, but I think preparations are pretty much... And you, you use that time to make some preparations for your trip as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that with preparations pretty much complete, uh, without too much more to do, uh, you'll be setting out soon. But um, I will turn things over to you in case there's any things you want to do. Why am I so awkward today? <laughs> I'm just going to do that. Had a so, start. Uh, one thing I want to do before we leave, in case we need to figure something out, is talk to Shay. Yes. So one of these days or nights or whatever, when we're all together... <laughs> Um, we can do that. Have our conference call. Okay. Where do you want to do it? Set the scene for me. And what time of day? 
probably like maybe right after lunch one of the days and when everyone's kind of in the keep kind of getting ready for the next thing i'll kind of gather everybody around for a little bit um, so like in the, in so the dining room area upstairs in okay. between the bedrooms okay I yeah think. that kind of like sitting room area with yeah, the yeah we go to that stuff. sitting room <laughs> right across from and then embers's uh, windowsill and they gave us like a object right mm -hmm. to... it's basically like a sending stone it's a yeah. stone carved with all these runes and stuff and you know that you can basically activate the magic effect and it will put you in contact with this person mm -hmm. so once everyone's there we will place the sending stone in, on that table in the middle and uh, kind of just look at everybody and well we didn't get great information on exactly how this works from the clouder uh, we don't know if there's a limit to the amount of time or like the sending spell, like n the number of words you can use. And player knowledge, we've already discussed some of the questions we want to ask. Mm -hmm. So um, let me just pull those up. And then. Well, party knowledge, we probably spent some time yeah. discussing. Yeah, that's a yeah, good yeah. <laughs> In game, I was, I was trying to say out of character, but then I said something. And weird I will say this: this week that is kind of blank is intentional because my intent for this week is during your prison break. If you need to flashback and say, "Oh wait, oh, we yeah. prepared for this," mm -hmm. this week is a good place to set a flashback. Yeah, I'm going to give you some time also in the town next to the prison. I think where mm -hmm. we can, so in case you want to set flashbacks there as well. It's a gray uh, barrel. Yeah, gray barrel. Can I? Could I have? Rolled like an arcana check on this thing, just get like yeah. get a glimpse of how it's actually used. Roll an arcana we... check. Okay. Can I help? Yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use my intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> like Good. I do with arcana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also gonna use flash of genius. So can I get guidance too. Actually, I can guide myself. Oh yeah, I can. Go. You can guide me. Yeah, that's fine. You it's love, but if I'm helping you, then I'll do it. I can do it myself. I think. Because I can offer bardic inspiration. If it's yeah. That, that yeah. Important. Let's do it. Let's okay. do it. Yeah. Is that a D eight? Okay. Yes. All right. Let's just roll everything we got. When we're at leisure, we have a lot of resources to go on a single roll. <laughs> okay, that one's good. Oh wow, these are really good. Uh, let's see. That's twenty nine. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the, while magic items, you know, can be kind of rare, um, you grew up in a place where your father collected a lot of these things, um, experimented on them and worked out all of the little details of them. Mm -hmm. And among what you, you could consider common magic items, you know, are yeah. the sending stones, right? And so, you know, the basics from just like kind of accompanying your father's research when you were younger okay. and it's the idea that there's usually a pair of stones connected magically um i guess i should pull up the description for sending stones <laughs> um uh, and yeah you can basically use them to channel the sending spell um when you examine these stones, however, the runes and things that are laid into them are different from what you would expect from your average sending stone, which kind of has like a, a limited capacity. This seems more like it will, once activated, connect the two, um, mm -hmm. probably for several minutes. Okay. Um, since you rolled high, uh, you think that um, the whatever like command word or um, you know trigger would be used to sever the connection is probably something that Shay he Hexwing has on their side, not something that you have. So basically, this will connect the stones until Shay decides the conversation is done. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll give that information to everybody. All right, and we can ask as many questions oh. as they let us ask. You rolled a twenty. You rolled really high. There's one more thing. Okay. Um. You didn't roll a thirty though. 
So <laughs> I'm gonna it's give you enough. I'm gonna give you a little hint, but not the full thing. Um, <laughs> there is another secondary spell um, wow. that is active within this stone. Um, it doesn't look like it will affect the communication. Like your communication is not going to be broadcast somewhere else or anything like that. But there is some sort of secondary effect that looks like it will trigger when the call ends. You don't necessarily know what that would be. Like a, yeah, a burner. I see. Okay. So, you know, put Probably some shields around it. Don't want to sure. put it on the nice mahogany table. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I can put it on like a metal plate or something. <laughs> okay. Okay. Like, hmm? <laughs> okay, everyone. I guess uh, let's get this let's get this started. All right. So yeah, I will initiate the conference call. Boom 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 boom. No, stop it. My fantasy. <laughs> My version. <laughs> um. No. Okay. Um. After you speak the command word, you would have been given a command word to yeah. kind of initiate it. Um. There is. Uh, like a silence, but when you listen very closely, there's like a, a small, like, crackling, staticky sound. And that continues for probably about a minute and a half, and then a voice comes through the stone, magically projected out of it. And it is this, um, like, uh, almost sounds like intentionally deep. Uh, basically, like the voice has been lowered to mask mm. the actual voice of the speaker. It's exactly like what you would hear in like a voice distortion to like hide the identity of the person on a TV show or whatever. My um, version. <laughs> and this voice comes through and it says, "Hello." Hello. We were told you could help answer some questions for us. Um, there's. Like a, a long, awkward moment of silence, and then the voice says, Yes. What do you want to know? A few things. We want to know how you avoided the dragon in Grey Mantle. After each time that you speak, there's that long, awkward pause. I'm not going to do it every time, but <laughs> it happens every single time. How long is the pause? Uh, probably like five seconds or so. Yeah, five to ten. Okay. Long enough that you're like, hello? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. okay. um, me? I'm just wondering if it's like transmission time or if it's him just like being him. Them. Them being them, rather. Whatever, that's fine. I mean, him, her, them, it's like Shay's gender's a big unknown, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the voice comes back again. You cannot avoid the dragon. The dragon must be removed. In my case, I forged papers to summon him away, Arias Grey Mantle, on a mission from the Emperor, ensuring he'd take his dragon with him. Wow, that's smart. Okay. Um, how is the high security access, high security area accessed? Well, again, on pause. <laughs> there are two entrances. One is located under a secret access in the warden's office. Okay. The other in the open-roofed chamber in which the dragon resides. Right. What are, or are there, anti-magic defenses at the prison? Uh, just looking through my answers. Each of the cells within the prison has some amount of anti-magic effect, so preventing magic within the cell itself. The majority of the prison is under no such effect. However, you would find it difficult to use teleportation into or out of the premises. 
there are other magical wards, but those are probably the most problematic. Yeah. Um. Did you have help from the inside when you escaped? Yes. There is a officer with a gambling problem who I was able to bribe into delivering my forgeries and giving the materials needed to create them. Did you give me a name? I never knew their name. Or recognizable feature? Some kind? <clears throat> There are not many officers in the prison, and unlike the rest of the staff, they do not rotate. The one who I spoke with was a veteran. Masculine voice, but... Small, stocky build. Dwarven, perhaps. Clarification point just for me. You said there's not many officers, and they don't rotate. So this is like, these are the permanent employees. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. I got it. Yeah, the rest of the prison staff, yeah, there's they... some rotation involved. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, other than forgeries, what were the main tools you used for your escape? Um, I'll let her out after this. Mm-hmm. Shay replies, the precise means of my escape are proprietary. I respect that. Um, would you tell me the route you took, or is that part of that proprietary nature? My cell was in the high security area, right, which is located underneath the main level of the penitentiary. Since I had assured that Arias and the dragon would be gone. Right. I scaled the stairs up into the dragon's hold and left from there. I see. Did you meet resistance on your way out? Yes. Okay. I mean, that kind of does it for the stuff I've written down, guys. Do you have any other... I'm looking at our chat to make sure... We can ask about the credentials. For the high security area, if you want. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me just find how you worded that question. I talked it. I'm just trying to remember. <laughs> unless you want to ask it. Well, remind me, <clears throat> out of character, what info you got already from the cloud, or as far as like, they were gonna impersonate some guards. They were going to give us disguises for mm-hmm. the yeah. They were going to basically procure aliases for you yes. from among the next group of people to rotate into the prison staff. Yeah. Right. So, in addition to the credentials used to be a guard, what extra credentials did the guards need to access the high security area? Only officers can access the high security area. The officers carry keystones. Keystones come in emerald, ruby, and citrine varieties. There are magical wards that block doorways in the high security area. Without a corresponding keystone, it is impossible to pass. So corresponding, like... Basically, you'll encounter red barriers, green barriers, and right. yellow barriers. Yeah. And you need a keystone that corresponds to the right one. So, did How did you bypass them? Did you have keystones? I procured one. Just one? From the officer you bribed or from another source? My escape route only required one. I see. Okay. So let me double check that's true. I think it is. It's <laughs> on my memory of the map. Uh... Yes, that is true. Their escape route only needed one. Mm. Do 
you know if the dragon has any weaknesses? That's a good question. Uh, let me look up the dragon step lock. <laughs> Melissa already has that, probably. <laughs> yeah, do you have it on hand? I hope it's sweet. Um... <laughs> But the record show I'm sticking my tongue out. <laughs> the record doth show it. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, Ignis is a boreal dragon. You won't get far attacking the creature with cold or fire. However, they are violent creatures. Perhaps you could turn their disposition against them as a manner of weakness. Turn their disposition against them. Yeah. Like they, um. Use their violent tendencies. Yeah, either. they yeah. pick fights easily. That yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. Short tempered nature. I wrote down violet. <laughs> not a violet creature, no. Not a violet creature. I have a question. Yeah. Does Ignis have a horde? Yes. On the premises? Yes. Um. I think that's. Anyone else? Any other words of wisdom from uh, for some would-be, you know, prison breakers, potentially? Uh, there's an extra long pause mm -hmm. this time. It goes on for like 30 seconds, and then the voice comes through and it just says, Send old Grey Mantle my regards. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. another <laughs> voice uh, uh, comes through the stone and it says, this stone will self-destruct in ten, mm -hmm. nine. Thank you for your help. Eight, seven. Okay. Put a bolt. So we planned for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how did you plan for it? What are you gonna do? Six, like, yeah. five, I mean, four. Yeah. Throw it, yeah. Throw it, throw throw it out the window. Okay. Three, two. Embers throws it out the window. One, and about twenty feet away from your keep, there's just this boom, like an eruption, like a full fireball. <laughs> just shout, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Out the window. Yeah, the, all the recruits down there are like diving for cover. <laughs> okay. You had your conversation with Shay. That was very helpful. Mm -hmm. That was really, really helpful. Well, I suppose it would be too obvious if we tried to lure Ignis away again. I don't think the same trick will work twice. Mm -mm. So, my first thought. If all of this is true, we could try and incite some sort of riot. Mm -hmm. mm. We're going to be working there. Okay. Certainly we could plant some seeds of chaos. I mean, it would work to at least uh, create a distraction, but how are we going to get one of those keystones? Well, if we were to incite something in the areas we don't need keystones, do we know? We would know, actually, from all the research. How about how many prisoners there are in total, right? Um, like what the occupancy limit is. Yes, you would know the occupancy limit of the main area, but yes, not necessarily the high security area. Yes. Uh, and I have to think because I did work that out the other day, but I didn't write it down. Just based on the number of cells. Let's see, so it's. Tevin's is thinking in a different direction. I see. Like maybe a female dragon. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, actually, Ignis is a any? female dragon. But... Oh, um, yeah. well, do we know anybody from the same? So this is kind of funny we're doing this because I also played a lot of a game called Prison Architect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> really thinking about that. Oh, she's like sleeping now, so she's okay. Mm. I don't know. Also, also to figure out. Um, prisoner capacity of the main area, if they were, if every cell was full, would be about 70. Oh, okay. That's not very big. 
That's much as I thought. And are they all individual cells, or are there some that are like holding cells that are like groups? Um, Embers would know from her time there, they tended to put people in individual cells. Though there were rare occasions where maybe someone would double up, but it was it was rare. And did they have controls to like open all cells at once? No, they were all individual. Okay. There's no, yeah, there's no, like, for all prisoners out into the yard. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's magic, you know? I don't know. <laughs> um, and in fact, uh, Embers would know that, like, yard time happened in small groups. Same with, like, dining time. Like, not everyone dines at the same time. Not everyone gets yard time at the same time. Yep. And yard time was kind of a privilege, not, like, a given right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yard time was always supervised by the dragon. Yes. So I also have a question. Okay. Um, I have a question. Because this is relying on some stuff I'm not sure that Embers would know, but I know because I DM, I, I DM both of the dragons sometimes. <laughs> uh, there's a kind of creature that dwarves hate, uh, and it's, it's found in sort of mountainous areas. They're intelligent enough that we might be able to hire one. Um, have you ever heard of a Zorn? Have I? I mean, I am native to a mountainous area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I might, actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, Vogma was in a volcano. Yeah, you've heard of Zorns. Zorns were probably, like, pests in yeah. the Vogma area. Yeah, I know what they are. If we can hire a Zorn to sort of eat away some of its hoard. That that would distract the dragon's attention. Do you think like enough to set down like a rampage or something so the guards would have to deal with it? Hmm. I mean it's worth a shot, right? I don't know yeah. if a rampage would help, but at least its attention would be focused. The guard. Yeah. The prison. Alright, after this conversation I'll take care of Sana. Um <laughs> Personally, I would like to employ as many ideas as possible at once. Mm. I think we just give them utter chaos. So we have as much distraction as possible. Not just one thing. Sounds like a good idea. Because we're probably going to need plans A through E, at least some of those to go through. Mm. So we have a chance at escaping. So, also just... Rewind for a sec. Um, is Nightmantis going with us for this? Because Nightmantis is out of town. Right, exactly. But she said Alchem, like she told me that she mm -hmm. would help, right? The, I don't. This was not supposed to happen yet. I know. So she went off to yeah. do her own thing. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was like, timeline wise, I'm like, I'm pretty sure she's gone and she's yeah. not going to be here in time. Okay. But we have. I mean, okay. do you have the ability to send messages over long distances? I do. So we could contact her. Yeah, but if she's. She get back in time. Why don't we tell her what, that we're going she to? She could meet up somewhere. Maybe. At least if she knows what we're planning. We can at least tell her that we're, we're going to start putting things in motion and then see where she's at. So, um, you probably have maximum tonight and then maybe one more day if you want to spend time in Amber Hearth. Any last minute things you want to do while you're here before heading out? But on record that we have to bought the magic items. But, yeah. Yeah. So, Say for the for the audience. I'm getting there. And I conveyed this to Zach when you guys were doing the shopping, but like I'll say it out loud for the audience as well. The magic items, if there was stuff that you were kind of on the fence about that you weren't sure if you'd need because it was situational, if you run into a situation where you need it and you didn't buy it, you can always say, Flashback, we bought it. <laughs> so Debbie would like to run real quick, done an audience because she forgot to ask about something. Okay. Or yeah. You, yeah, we can just do that. Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Nadia's back from uh, being on trial somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yep. Which I assume means it went well, because if you well, don't come back, how are they going to hold her? Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Put her in gray mantle again. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nadia's in the shop, and she's kind of like uh, sweeping with a broom and humming to herself. Hi there, sorry about the five big mouth section. I was just trying to impress Bert. Well what are you what are you being sorry about? Because 
I don't want to steal from you. That's the point of the section, though. Oh, okay, okay. Sure. It's there. Well, that's why it's called the Five Finger Discount section. It's meant to be stolen from. Yeah. That's how you earn one of these. And she pulls a coupon out of her belt. <laughs> we have this uh, really important thing we're going to do in a couple of days. And yeah, think it definitely got... not breaking into a prison. She winks at you. <laughs> uh, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Uh -huh. She just holds up her hands. No judgment. I mean, you've not met my boss, but if you met my boss, you'd understand why no judgment. So. Well, you see how little I am. Yeah. Is there any scroll spell or something magic item that you could, that you have, that would make me huge, like? really 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 big and um, cute really really cute huge and cute <laughs> um yeah she she actually like honestly thinks about it um you know scroll wise i don't think i have things go sideways. Like, do you want to turn, do you want to be yourself but huge? Or something else but huge? No. Can I trust you? You probably laugh at me. No, I'm not going to laugh at you. But don't tell the others. Okay. I want to turn into a really cute dragon. <laughs> Nadia doesn't laugh. Ethan's <laughs> laughing. Uh, Nadia takes your request with all seriousness, and she goes over and starts, like, pulling out scrolls from the top shelf. Um, actually, she probably has to go into the back room uh, to look into this type of scroll. Um, would you just roll for me oh, no. a d100? Okay. Wild magic! Yes. Three. What is that? 32? Okay. I was thinking anything below 40% would work. Yeah, um, that's good. Okay, it's gonna, I mean, it, what she has will be expensive. We'll have to work out something. She changes. Uh, let me just make sure it can do the thing that you want. I plug up my hair so I don't even know what you want. Because you didn't want the other stuff. I've lost, I've lost it. These definitely. traitors. I know. Ah, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't dragon. work for this. Oh, mm -hmm. Ignis is the girl dragon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you well, make you boy dragon? You don't know okay. what Ignis is into. Yeah. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's also true. It's just so even cool. having another dragon around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could be very ter territorial. What I was thinking of wouldn't work for this purpose. I was thinking of a true polymorph squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> I bet better. What is it? Shape change or something? Shape change is, I think. Shape change. Because true polymorph, you have to be... Your level has to be higher than the challenge rating. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, yeah, that wasn't going that to would never work. Shape change. Let's take a look. Uh, shape change is, like, real high. I know. That's why yeah. I was like, oh, shoot. They both are ninth level. Okay. Yeah. Um... You assume the form of a different creature for the duration. This new form could be a creature with a challenge rating equal. Yeah, same thing for shape change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, not necessarily. Yeah. Some dragons can. Yeah. So grumpy. grumpy. Well, with, with Nadia, I think she considers everything else. There is a spell called. Illusory Dragon. Mm hmm Yep, That's, Harmony cast that one. It's an 8th level spell. Right. But yeah. um, she pulls that off. spell down off the um, the shelf and says, this won't turn you into a dragon, but it can project an illusion of a dragon. Um, yeah, and the, the illusion can actually do stuff. It's, it's a very substantial illusion. Okay. How long does it last? 
One minute. Mm. Well, <laughs> that might be all I need. Um, I'll have to do some really good bar bartering for it. Uh, well, why don't you roll a d20, and we'll see how much this would cost. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm just dragging you looking like Got this way. 34. <laughs> this is, I mean, it's a high level it's spell. It's a four. Okay. That's actually really low. She says, My boss wants me to sell this for 7,000 gold pieces. I get that what you're trying to do is something very big, and I have a feeling my boss would support it. Lowest I can do is six. Six thousand. I don't think we have that left. We do not have enough money. Yeah. Would you take items and trade? Uh, potentially. She what do you have? Except your mother's pamphlet. Oh. Yeah. She, <laughs> Nadia looks at it, um, and she can see that it's like well worn and well used. Um, and she she shakes her head and says, "I can't take I can't take that item." Um, Okay, what's the highest you could do? How much do we have, guys? Do we want to spend all our money on this? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so what's the plan with this drag? Let's... Well, this is like... Well, we're not going to know that. Yeah. Right. What but if she way? doesn't want us to know, so we're not going to... Okay, you don't want to tell us... You want to, you want to tell us what the plan is? The plan was that if you got the dragon up in the air somehow, like with protecting its sword or whatever, if it went up a little ways, she would fly around and distract it. Like either I was hoping to be like friendly sort, but if not, she would irritate it and it would fly off just to give you enough time to escape. And then I'd poof out of there with my dimension door. So it was just, it's just for a distraction? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nadia might have a bargain version of this. There are other, yeah, illusories. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Give, give me a second. The same thing. Like major illusion or like. Uh, what is it? Major image or something? Silence. Yeah, silence. Silence. Major image. illusion. Yeah. Or, um, uh, she pulls a, a shelf off of, or, or a scroll off of a lower shelf and says, not quite as impressive, but. This one I can offer to you for 1,000. Uh, it's a spell called Draconic, or Summon Draconic Spirit. It's not a huge dragon, but it is a large dragon, and it lasts for longer. Lasts for an hour. Okay, and it costs 1,000? Mm-hmm. Okay, can you hold that aside for me, and I'll go back and talk to the gang, see what they want to do. Can do. Thank you. And now you can flash back if you need to buy that spell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so the other things, the things we're definitely getting. Yes. Does Embers want one of the hats? Yes, she wants the bray. The frumpy one? The no. Bray. The good one. <laughs> the nice one. So we will get a beret. We're gonna get two magic keys for tuppence. Yeah. Not all of them. Not ten. That's a good price for all of them. <laughs> you guys want to do that? It might take sure. all ten. Yeah, get all of them. <laughs> get ten <laughs> keys for tuppence. <Nice. laughs> We're gonna get a shrimping potion then. Yes. <laughs> uh, the ring of spell story. Mm -hmm. Am I the only one not it. getting a magic item here? The robe. You're getting the robe. Which robe? The robe useful, items. useful items. Oh, that one. That's for me. Okay. Isn't it for you? That's the one I just wanted. thought we would want one. But, okay, that one could be for me. That's for me. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's for me. It's very for item. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we got that, which I'm super excited about. Yeah. The, the robe that you get is reversible, so that you can wear the patches on the outside or on the inside secretly. I love reversible items. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, and that is our... 
current shopping list. That, that, maybe... that doesn't take me too much thought, does it? Mm, nope. That's great. Yeah, because I don't have any. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I think My favorite up. magic item I've ever owned. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Well, in this one, it was made by Harmony. Yeah, I so really... it's probably the best one ever made. Yeah, I really oh, like it. That's exciting. Okay. Kay and I made some modifications. <laughs> we we uh, may have uh, <laughs> tweaked a few things. And awesome. coupon. Yep, for 10%, right? 10%. Was it 10% or 15 I think the DM just said 10%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I remember we talked I think I did bump it up to 15 did. <laughs> We can, <laughs> well, we can watch that. No, no, no. We might as well just watch the recording, because if we buy stuff later... We'll just say it's 15. I'm okay, good with 15. that's fine. I wrote down... Oh, no, that's... The... <laughs> Anyways. I'll look for it. So, yeah. That's our shopping. Okay. And, um... I'm gonna add my new ring to Everything ring. else, we just will figure it out later. And I did get the seeming spell in it, the ring. Seeming, not semi. Not semi, right, right, seeming. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we get any, like, fun details of Torin's trip? Um, yeah, if you ask about it. Yeah. Um, Torin and the recruits will kind of, um, gather around and, uh, Tell you a little bit about their adventure. I'm just trying to find the section on the recruits in my notes. Um, yeah, so Tremella, the um, Mykonid, Eustace Good Grapes, the Amber Hearth local human farmer, uh, Youth, and um, what was her name? Izzy, mm -hmm. uh, the Hobgoblin uh, Priestess of Tiamat. Okay. Uh, kind of gather up with Torin, and uh, this is the first night back, perhaps after their mission. And uh, Torin kind of gets them to all kind of fall in line at like parade rest, mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> he kind of gives you a little smirk at like how well they're they're doing the holding the stance. And then, um, yeah, Torin gives you a report. Um, he says. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> all in all, mission went well. Uh, client was happy. No major altercations. There was a little bit of an incident where we encountered some strange underdark creatures, like large, flightless chickens with stone-like hooks on their hands. Uh, but, thanks to Tremella and some quick thinking on... Izzy's part, we were able to get out of that without conflict. That's great. Other than that, uh, turns out Eustace here is handy with a map, and we were able to navigate around the dragon's territory that you marked, and Excellent. goods were delivered down to Erudition safely, and new goods were brought back up for trade in Amberhearth. Client well pleased. Great. Excellent. Excellent news. Question. Were they also supposed to like mark the path? Or did they like to like make it more clear? Or was that not their thing? I think that was what you kind of already took care of when you did your oh, trip. We marked it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't know where we did that. Okay. Those were awesome. You mapped it. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I didn't know if we like put like markers down or anything. Mm. Or, like, any, like, sign it. I see. Um the merchants might have done that, but it wasn't a part of That's right. okay. their okay. mission. They were just kind of assigned for like cool. body. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well done. Yeah. Good job, everybody. Um, and you can when you say well done, you can see all of the recruits get like even Izzy gets a little bit of a smile. Uh, and they all kind of exchange glances. Like even at a quick glance you can see that they built some rapport. True. Yeah. Um and Torin gives them like a like the commander's nod, like, you did a good job. And then he says, at ease and dismissed, and they all kind of file out. I think um, they've earned a few days off, or maybe a round of drinks at the, on the, at the tavern on us. What do you say? Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. I want to roll insight on the recruits as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's 15. What are you trying to find out? Just like general morale, like like if they feel like you know, they're feeling like level of fulfillment with um, these types of tasks and stuff. Yeah, you can see, like there's a general satisfaction among them. Like they all three of them 
look like they felt like they did a good job and feel more confident. Um, Eustace in particular has a little bit of like a a wide-eyed look in his face, um, having it been like his first time leaving Amber Hearth. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. he kind of came back um, a little bit starstruck. Yeah. Um, because, like, you know, used, with Eustace, that's kind of what I was thinking of, like, he never left. And then the Mike and Ed, Tr Tramilla, mm -hmm. like, she's, we're still kind of figuring her out, right? Like, like she wanted to travel a bunch. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the, the, it's kind of the opposite of Eustace. Like, you can still see that, like, I'm pleased with myself sort of uh, feeling in Tramilla. Yeah. Um, but... Tremella doesn't have the same sort of like a wide-eyed look that Eustace has because Tremella wants to see everything else. Yeah, that was familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was familiar territory. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, Izzy's still like keeping some distance from the other two, but um, like for example, um, Tremella has a bit of a thing with like personal space. Tremella doesn't really get mm -hmm. it, so Tremella at one point was like leaning closer and closer and closer <laughs> to Izzy, and Izzy, instead of getting, like, frustrated, just kind of, like, smiled and, like, pushed Tremella away, and <laughs> Tremella was like, oh yeah, right, right, and kind of, yeah. Away. So, like, so it looked like they're kind of getting stuff. together. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Positivity. Okay, great. That's all I wanted. Um, but they fi filed out, and Torin, uh, once it's just the group of you in the room, says, so, Couple days off, nice round at the tavern. Then what? Do you have anything you want to direct them to? Well, oh. we are going to be gone for a while, so maybe they should look after the keep while we're gone. They're going to have to do that and kind of maintain our duties to the to Amber Hour right. while we're gone. So take on any odd jobs that people might have for you here. As the representatives of the of the people. Right, right. Okay. So we can we can keep up training. We can take on some odd jobs. That sounds doable. But stay in the general locale. Remember the car mission. Mm -hmm. How long will you be gone? That's our estimate here. And you can see I mean, roll an insight check. Anyone who wants to. Okay. I'm really good at these. You said Why it did you say me? that? You said it, not me. I'm testing a theory. You are really good at these. <laughs> I mean, that, that's not terrible. It's probably still going to beat mine. Was, it was, well, yeah. 18. It's okay. good. I only got a 10. 20. Yeah. Um, the 18 and the 20. You can see that, like, Torrin is attempting to be delicate here and like skate around asking you where you're going and so instead he asked how long are you going mm -hmm. to be gone Torn, we're doing something kind of dangerous this time around i'm not sure how much of the details that we can share with you but it's something good we're going to free somebody from unjust in prison. Torin kind of thinks for a minute and then says, <clears throat> Well, <clears throat> I trust your judgment. I do. I just was a bit worried. I've seen you ever since I got back huddled in corners with your heads pressed together, whispering, and whatever you're up to, I, I know it's big and I know it's important. Uh, and with the 18 and the 20, uh, you can see that Torrin is concerned about you. More than anything. Embers, you didn't get that high. Yep. Assumes that Torin is like worried about being bored, <laughs> and says, "Ah, oh, well, listen. If uh, if training gets old, um, you might talk to Gashur and see if she knows any 
unique type threats in the area that you could maybe hint. Um, I, um, <laughs> well, the trainees, they've got a lot to learn still, so I, I don't think we'll run out of things to do, but that's a good tip. I said I trust your judgment, but I still don't trust that one, so it, now that you mention it, I may keep a little bit of an eye on her. If, if you could maybe, while you're doing that, be nice to her and be friends with her? Yeah, Torin gets like a big smile on his face. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to be mean, I was just going to... <laughs> to watch and make sure she's not up to anything. I understand, but I, she could use friends, is all I'd say. We could all use friends. And he, yeah, he makes that big goofy smile again. Fins. It could be a mission for him. If you want that to be my mission, no. I'm happy to make that my mission. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to be gone for... It's our estimate. It was like... We will, we'll be instantly in Twin Towns, then we're going to Fine Air and taking the rail. Is that, uh -huh. is that yeah. the itinerary? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's like over a week to just to get there, right? Yeah, you're we'll probably looking at a week and a half of travel. Yeah, we're going to be able to get back pretty much instantly, but... If yeah. we can use your thing, which... We'd have on. to leave the grounds, but yeah. 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 So it's probably know. like two weeks or so? Yeah, yeah two at If we at can't most, use your thing, we're in a lot of trouble. Yep. Two at most, three weeks. Right. Well... <clears throat> I better get out there and give them the good news that they're bar tabs on the Seekers. But One round, Torrent. Don't go crazy. One big two. round. Two. I'll give them two. One big round. Two rounds. They earned it. and um, Two rounds. Anything after that's on you. They're, they're going to be good. I can tell. All of you be careful. You too. Yeah. Um... I'm gonna also transfer the alarm spell thing to Torin. Yeah. If he's the, <laughs> so he can actually manage it and I'll teach him. Uh, before Torin leaves, uh, he kind of uh, turns around and then walks over towards uh, maybe where like Embers, Elwyn, and Tuppence are. Mm -hmm. And he kind of goes for a big hug. Like he opens his arms wide to like get any of you in a hug who will hug him. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll hug him. And Tep and Swisters. I know, I don't get it about Kashuri either. What the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he whispers back, I was there and I don't <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly she's on our side. <laughs> um yeah, but he, he gives he gives you this big hug and then just kind of like pulls he pulls you in for like one big squeeze that kind of hurts a little bit, but in a good way, maybe cracks your back. Um, I'm gonna hug him back as tight. Yeah, roll, uh, roll an athletics check. <laughs> okay. We'll use your intelligence. My athletics. Can I use my intelligence? You can't. I'm sure. <laughs> oh boy, I have a negative one to intelligence or to strength. So this. Is... <laughs> oh, it jumped and it's totally cocked. I'm gonna use flash of genius on that. <laughs> can you really do that? Yeah. No. Uh, well, eight unless I can increase it to twelve. No, it's an eight. No, it's an eight. Um, yeah. You squeeze him as hard as you can, but like <laughs> it's like squeezing a rock. Yeah, but it's the like, he's so count. solid. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Um, he kind of pats you on the back and disengages and gives you one last goofy smile and then says, "Right, well, I'm off to the bar." <laughs> Before he leaves, like as he's disengaging, I just squeeze his hand one more time mm -hmm. and I make eye contact and I just say, "We're gonna be all right, Torrent. Don't worry about us, okay?" And I promise we'll explain everything when we get back. Uh, yeah, he nods and says, I'll hold you to that. And then he leaves. So. Bye. Yep. Yeah. Oh, we're going to have to tell him soon. When we get back. I mean, we're not going to be able to hide it anymore. Obviously. If we're successful. I know. And that leads to other questions, too. It'll be all right. What's next? Packing bags. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, you pack, you get a nice long rest, the morning comes, and uh, it is time to hit the road. Um, you, with all of your stuff, all of your gear packed, everything you need for the prison break, you make your way out into the woods uh, with Nim to go to the fairy circle, which will take you to the keep in the Feywild. Um, Tuppence, you can open the way, and that kind of flowery, mushroomy arch opens up. You're able to step through into uh, the Feywild. What is the prevailing mood among you today? I think Embers is definitely apprehensive. Anxious. Confident. Determined. Okay. Um, it's... Um, <clears throat> it's a little bit gray and cloudy when you step in. Um, but as you start to like take steps towards the keep, um, there's little peaks of bright sunshine that kind of comes through the clouds and stuff. And so you're kind of walking through these like dappled patches of sunshine in the midst of like gray, cloudy weather. Um, and within some indeterminate amount of time, you find yourselves <laughs> in front of the keep. 24 uh, hours. <laughs> once again, it is rooted to the ground instead of floating up, up, up in the sky on its earth moat. Um, and Nim kind of leads your way uh, into it and down into... Um, the treasure chamber where this time un unlike the like bleak underground room where you faced off against the enlarged version of nim um you find this kind of uh richly decorated room with all this like um these all all these like paintings of like natural landscapes and like um like innate like filigree and stuff in the walls and like these looping and um kind of beautiful patterns and then sort of in the center of the room there is um like a large uh like purple and blue and pink sort of crystal that kind of juts out of the ground and there are runes going around that um which kind of loosely looks sylvan in nature um and Tuppence, as you look at them, you can see that it's actually the words to a song. And uh, Nim kind of perches on top of this crystal in the center of this treasure chamber. It says, All right, now all you need to do is uh, visualize the ring that we're going to. Obviously, I can't do that because I don't know this one. But if you know it, that should be enough. So I need each of you to do it. And Nim starts to sing a song in Sylvan, um, and it's a song of journeys and travel, and um, all of you can feel a pulling and a warping sensation, um, and if your eyes are closed, you can see, um, or if your eyes are open, you can see this kind of like whoosh of rainbowy colors that like fly rises up to obscure your vision briefly if your eyes are closed you just kind of see that behind your eyelids just mm -hmm. like lights mm -hmm. in all these numerous colors um and there's a spinning and a twirling to it and eventually that all calms down and nim's song comes to an end and you open your eyes and you find yourselves in the same chamber but with the distinct feeling that you're somewhere else I think that worked. She was like it. Yeah. All right. Um, do we know how to get? Should, is the circle going to be just right outside? Uh, we we should be pretty much right in the middle of it. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Ready? Yeah. Lead the way. Thank you, Nim. Of course. Um, just so I've I've got this right. I, I don't need to wait here. I can take the keep back. Yes. Okay. Yes, you can go back. We'll see you back in Amber Park. Okay. All right. 
safe tra safe travels and um tuppence maybe when you get back we can talk a little bit more about that orchestra thing that would be great you're amazing thanks you're amazing she <laughs> gives you a big smile mm. all right let's go just okay. behind some of our old homes. um you make your way out and the landscape before you is very different from like the flowing fields uh, that you were on, on in kind of like the, the verdant grasslands. Um, Twin Towns would be situated more in like the floating skylands area, um, mm -hmm. which is more like Tuppence's home area. Um, and so when you step out, you find yourself on this massive earth moat just this huge but like as you look into the distance you can see the edges of it but you get that feeling of like that's miles and miles between me and the edge of this thing and again when you look into the distance even from here though you can see the verdant grasslands down below the floating skylands um in the distance you can see that tree almost as if like you are not any farther away from it than you were before mm -hmm. with all of its like rainbow leaves and things like that um, and as you kind of look around the area, it almost does look like an inversion, or not really an inversion, like an altered form of the Twin Towns landscape. Like you can see a lake in the distance, um, where like the, the, the rhyme lock, I think mm -hmm. that it was called, would be. Um, you can see kind of like a little valley where that church and cemetery was um but you are sitting on the edge of a forest uh with some of those trees that tuppence mentioned that kind of float out of the ground and their roots okay. tether them and you can see these trees kind of bobbing and levitating mm -hmm. you don't say oh my gosh um and as you turn around and look back at the keep <laughs> you can hear a song echoing from its halls before there is a rainbow flash and twirl and the keep is gone The whole key twirls? <laughs> kind of. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. It also kind of like warps and distorts in size mm -hmm. and shape a little bit too, as it yeah. goes. So. Mm -hmm. Alright. It's amazing. That is amazing. Hey, wow. I need to bring that uh, power plane. Very convenient. The flying castle. <laughs> Keep thing just teleport around. It's a little bit um, conspicuous. Though. surprises me his attitude on that. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a big machine, so makes sense. Yes, but it's very magic. I know. Mm. Baby steps, Tuppy. Okay. You gotta get us one of those trees still, though. Well, you're right by a forest. Have, have at it. <laughs> We're gonna go find the fairy ring. <laughs> Could I find it? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, what do you even want it for again? For the um for your spell. For your spell. Oh, I see. Yeah. I mean, I mean how would you transport it? How how big of a piece do we need? Just you just... need a large plant. Oh, oh so it's gotta be like at least it. ten by ten, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well I mean not really, well, but not like ten feet across. You know what? Yeah. It's it needs to be wide enough to fit cube. one of us through. Yeah. Tall enough to fit embers through. I need to open a door with it. Alright, never mind. Needs to be pretty big tree. I'll come with an idea, but with one too last look at the trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, you like Nim said, you're basically standing in the middle of a ring of mushrooms and standing stones. Oh, I see. And then you can open the gate back to to the towns. This is pantomime. Playing the flute. Play the flute. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You should yeah, make a little noise like this. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, similar to before, that archway of flowers and fungus, and in this case, those standing stones almost kind of <sighs> join the archway as well. Mm. Um, and you can see on the other side the structures of Glimmercairn, the gnomish settlement in Twin Towns. Right, step through. Um, you step through, and on the other side, um, hold on. 
Sorry, in my notes. Oh boy. I know. Uh, you step through, and uh, there is someone standing there, an elderly gnome. Um, an old, old male gnome, and he's got um, a owl on his shoulder that looks similarly old and wizened. <laughs> and as you step through, the owl goes, hoo, 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 and like flaps its wings. <laughs> um, and the old gnomish man basically jumps out of his boots um he looks like he was about to light a pipe uh, and like all of the weed that was in the pipe just goes flying everywhere. <laughs> uh and he turns around um he was sitting on one of the standing stones and he goes oh goodness uh you gave me a little fright there apologies oh no one's no one's come through here since we uh oh it's been a while oh tuppence hello you're back since the red caps right Oh, since this one. Right. And he points to Tuppence. Mm. Oh. Hello. I'm so sorry we startled you. Oh, no, it's, um... But you feel alive right now, don't you? Oh, boy, don't I. <laughs> um, Deputy Hoots here nearly <laughs> laid an egg, I think. <laughs> Woo! Uh, what, what can I do for you? Uh, and, uh, Tuppence, you recognize uh, Rimple Fizzlefern, the, uh gnome who serves as kind of like the uh the warden defense for glimmer uh and this gnome actually is wearing kind of like an outdated and um a little bit worn and used imperial warden's outfit uh but it's worn like sloppily well we're on a, a journey passing through oh well um you should really, you should really stop by the mayor's house. Um, I know that uh, Mayor Dazzleberry would love to have you for some some cookies and and tea on your way. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing! Yeah, that sounds yeah, really good. Yeah, you can make a quick stop, say hi. I can make any glue for you again, outside <laughs> if you want. Well, now that you now that you kind of step out and actually look around, it's not all frozen and icy like it was before. Mm. Um, it's colder than it was in Amberhart. <laughs> by a significant amount but it, it, there's not like snow covering the ground um all I the mean, plants are like green and bright <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's still making it you're still good if i could make frozen things but it's fine do you want to make it <laughs> as you look across the valley though the church in the center of it the ground does still look frozen next to the church mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah we weren't able to do anything about the nexus here I love this place. Let's go. Hurry, come on. Oh, all right, all right. Okay. Lead the way. <laughs> all right. Well, we don't need to role play it out, but needless mm. to say, Tawin Dazzleberry and uh, her wife Oda, I think, mm -hmm. are happy to have you. They're the elderly mayor mm -hmm. and uh, her spouse. Um, yeah, they're happy to take you in for all kinds of teas and ciders. And I remember, if I remember correctly, Oda is the baker mm -hmm. who can bring you all kinds of like fruit tarts and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. And they basically push all of this on you <laughs> uh, and like extras for the road. Yeah, so. we probably ask about how things are going in town. Well, uh, yeah, things have been good. You know, we've been getting we've been getting along pretty well with. Uh, Rhyme Strand. Um, now that Albrecht's no longer around and mm -hmm. a, piece, a part of the picture, um, yeah, things are good. And our very own uh, Very, the inventor, you might remember, was, uh, of um, very good inventions. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Uh, I, think I didn't realize that was the name of the show. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it was. Uh, well, she's been working with a, a dwarf over there, a blacksmith, and That's right. you know they've mm -hmm. made some they've made some great strides. In fact, you might see them flying around. They often are around this time, and uh, she kind of yeah she kind of goes to the window and she goes, oh yeah, there they are, and she points out the window. Mm. Uh, there is basically um, a kobold and this like big blacksmith dwarf. Who you remember? I think his name was Murdoch. Murdoch, that's right. Yeah. Um, they are seated on basically a two-person bicycle <laughs> that has like airplane wings attached to it yes. that Road are runners. flapping <laughs> and uh it is a very like wobbly sort of flight uh and you can see like as you watch a wind catches them and the whole thing like oh, tilts no. to the side a little bit 
Uh, but then they recover. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, they're kind of soaring around the valley. Yeah, they've uh, well, there were a couple spectacular crashes, but they've got they almost never fall anymore. That's great. Can we flag them down? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. I cannot remember at all what voices Barry and Murdoch did. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah. We don't have to, I mean... We don't have to play it out. Yeah. I just had okay. a question. Sure. For them. So now that I have this wind nexus power, I can just generate <laughs> wind. So could they, like, craft, like, an, like a aircraft for me? Like, I could just power with the wind nexus? Uh, Barry will come up to you and will say, So you're wondering if I could craft you... Basically another one of these, once we perfect the design. Well, but I wouldn't need the... Yes, but like with the the generation of what I can do already, right? Because then it wouldn't need to be like... You just need like a paraglider. Yeah, she, she nods and says, Well, it'd be tough to test without you around to generate the winds for That's us, true. but... I mean, we can work something out. You Does Elwin suggest a paraglider? No. <laughs> um, she says, yeah, well, we could, we could make a rudimentary sailcloth sort of thing that could hold you aloft, perhaps. Um, how, what's the travel distance between here and Amberhearth? I forgot, like, just like... Um, like, like two weeks? Two weeks, oh, that's but... Yeah. What was it, like, two weeks to Fymir and then two weeks to It was, like, mm -hmm. one to Fymir and then one to... Yeah, okay. But, um, there is supposed to be railroads being built this direction, so mm -hmm. that From could Horizon be... Trout to up into Ardalir, now that Ardalir is part of the Empire. Mm -hmm. They can make railroads going for all now. kinds of directions. Do they have a way ways of like long distance communication set up here? Like any any sort of things like that that we could like just keep in touch somehow? Or would it just be like messenger drake type thing? Yeah, yeah I mean yeah. they've got messenger drakes. Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll just uh, keep tabs. Talk about. It. Also, need some schematics of what I think. And yeah, very, very nods. Um, because I remember you helped very out a lot when yeah. you were here. And very I connect. Says, I, yeah, we connect with them with Marduk. Yeah. Oh yes, I, I'm very happy to to work more with you in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please do. Yes. Send designs. Send materials. We you can talk. It. You got it. She gets yes. like she gets like a big manic smile yes. on her face. Yes. Perfect. Okay. That's all I wanted. Just to kind of. That. Originally, when I designed this town, Very and Murdoch were supposed to be NPCs that you could potentially recruit to come to Amber Hearth. Yeah, mm. shoot. So, I'm more than happy for you. Maybe we will recruit them. Mm -hmm. Set them up for the workshop. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I'm thinking. That's something for later. Later. Um. How, what time of day is it now? I mean, like, oh, morning like still. Instantaneous travel, yeah. so we don't really You probably spend the morning to... in Glimmercairn. Yeah, we don't really have a reason to, like, stay the night here no. unless we want to. We we got to be on our way, but we ought yeah. to yeah. stop in and check in. Pecan. Yeah. Pecan. Yeah. Pecan. Yeah, we can also check in on Rhyme Strand for a little bit if we want. <clears throat> right? <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, should make some rounds for Rhyme Strand is bustling. Um... Last time you saw it, uh, things were kind of on lockdown a little bit because of, like, they were braced for attacks from yes. zombies, like, mm -hmm. every night. Mm -hmm. um, now, it's, like, there are dwarves going about all kinds of business. There's, like, dwarves working out in, like, farms. There are dwarves who you can see um, kind of, like, going back and forth between um, rocky areas in the region, like, doing mining and stuff. Um, there's a lot of fishing going on on the the rhyme lock itself. Um, I think that the old mayor, uh, Gillied Cold Lake, took back over. So you can you can briefly check in with her. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems like Rhyme Strand is just it's kind of flourishing at the moment. So. Great. Yeah, I mean I think I mean just a quick check in, you know, see how they're doing, we can tell how we're doing, you know. I mean, unlike Glimmer Karen, they didn't see Tuppence when she went back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, they haven't seen you guys since the whole party. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that was like, what was timeline wise? That was like uh, months ago? Yeah, yeah a month and a half ago. Yeah, so yeah, you just. I didn't have anything specific. Just wanted to Actually, close, this. yeah, to two months. Did you have something? Yeah. Or I'll say hi to everybody. Yeah, okay. So at least check in with the mayor, check in with them. Yeah. Well, Murdoch's in the other place now. Was there one other person that was helping us over here at Town? It was a con. Well, I met in Rhymestrand. Oh. Um, Clearly, there was a con. Gillard's son was the Albrecht. Right? That was yep. Albrecht. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was. And he was good. the he was the bad guy. And we've uh, seen him since. He was like, or you? I think you've seen him. Yeah, and it was Vert who saw him. He yes. had teamed up with the Warforged bounty hunter who was after yes, Vert. That's right, jerk. They still haven't caught. Okay, that's fine. Then we yeah. go check in with Fakhan. Fakhan, and what's his friend's name? Uh, Bardrin. Bardrin. Let's start with a C Bardrin. for some reason. Yeah, Bardrin. That's right. Okay. Yes, Bardrin. Um, Hakon's tavern is... I mean, for it being early in the morning, it's not that busy. <laughs> um, but there are there are dwarves in here, there are gnomes in here. Um, some of them are even like in mixed groups drinking together, which wasn't really happening when you guys arrived here. They were kind of yeah. keeping to themselves. Um, the Broken Axe Tavern now has a large golden anchor above yes. the fireplace, I believe. <laughs> um, Hakon sees you and uh, is very happy to see the group. Um, you can... Uh, I'm not going to play Will's character so we don't have to roleplay it out, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's happy to see you and it's like happy to pour you a couple drinks for the road, that kind of thing. Um, Bardrin is actually like fully manifested. You mm -hmm. remember she was like a manifestation yeah. of mm -hmm. his hammer. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like manifested, but like not in like her full dwarven armor or anything like that. She's manifested in like a uh, like like a, a bar woman outfit. And she is um, like out there like delivering food and like wiping tables and um, whistling happily to herself, which is kind of a transformation from when you last saw her. Mm -hmm. Um, on the other hand, you can see that Hakan doesn't seem like he's gotten out much or at all since you left. Oh. Hey. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to play out the whole thing, but I think I will just ask Hakan while we're talking if he's seen Fritz, really. Um, and yeah, he'll tell you that he hasn't, um, not since, uh, Fritz left around the time that you did. Okay. Yep. Maybe we have like late breakfast or lunch or something. Yeah. yeah. Again. If you're not full of. <laughs> oh, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, I it's been like <laughs> you went to early see morning pastries too. for yeah. breakfast. We went to Rhinestone. By the time we make it up to the tavern, yeah. it's lunchtime. We have like a. It's a long walk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Light lunch or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, and as you were crossing the valley, when you go past the church, it is. Like several degrees colder in that area. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have anything specific for me on strange okay. enough. So. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, probably by early afternoon, you are off north along the main road. The what did I name this road? Last time we traveled this road, we had a wagon. Yep. You could have brought the wagon if you. Maybe there's one in my pocket. Oh, where's your chariot? <laughs> I can be um, several chariots in this campaign. You travel north or along the thawbound thoroughfare. That's what it's called. Oh. Yeah. Thawbound. Let's see. Well, I will take out one of these windows. <laughs> do you? No. <laughs> I do not. Okay. Well, we have a rowboat. Yeah, don't worry about that right now. Let's <laughs> just... We'll just... We'll walk this time, I guess. Okay. Um, it's about a week of travel. Mm -hmm. I do need someone to roll a d6. Okay. To see what you encounter along the way. Uh, it's a one. A one? Well, that's interesting. Oh, no. That's really interesting. Oh, no. 
when the DM says that. I know. Oh, so one know. plus some stuff. Why do we let Kate roll anything? I know. <laughs> you shouldn't have let me do it. I just like rolling dice so much. Um, this one has been on the encounter table for a while, actually. Oh mm-hmm. boy. Um, as you're traveling up the road along familiar paths, though everything is much more thawed than last time you were here. Um, in fact, it's like a lot of like bright green grass and um, clear skies and things like that. You are in the middle of summer right now, so it's actually very pleasant. Um, you see a number. I mean, you encounter a number of people traveling back and forth, traders and things like that. And you pass small towns along the way, um, but along one of the stretches. Um, long stretches of road between towns, uh, you see a group approaching that doesn't look like traders or merchants or anything like that. Like, they don't have a wagon, um, but it's a number of, uh, it's probably, let's see, one, two, three, four figures uh, traveling down the road in the opposite direction. Um, At a distance, it's hard to make out their features, but um, like they're not, they don't have any like wagons or like, uh, you know, anything like that. Like they've got backpacks and things. They look like maybe nomads or travelers of some kind. Mm-hmm. And they're coming your direction. Should we say hi? Keep our distance. It's up to you. I mean, they don't seem particularly dangerous. Travel in light. Alright. Okay. Um, as they draw closer, and you kind of move closer to them, uh, something becomes readily apparent to you. They are all four tabaxi. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Um, so there's four of these cat-like humanoid figures coming towards you. Uh, two of them, as you get closer, look to be elderly. They walk with like kind of like a little bit of a stoop. Maybe they have like a like canes and things like that to help them walk, or like walking sticks. Um, one of them looks like maybe young middle age ish, uh, and the third one looks um, young, like twenties at the most. Um, and yeah, uh, the two elderly ones, one of them's got this like chestnut brown fur. Uh, the other one has this like grayish fur with black spots. Um, the middle aged one uh, has like orange and white fur. And the young one has kind of like a calico sort of fur. And yeah, yeah as you get close, they kind of like one of the elderly ones waves at you. Way back. Way back. Offer some uh, sweets that we have. <laughs> yeah, they kind of draw up close. Um, and one of the elderly ones, um, <laughs> the one with the chestnut brown fur, and as you get close, you can see he's got like bright green eyes, actually. Um, uh, kind of gets up close to the group of you and uh, kind of steps forward as like the group's rep- representative to talk uh, and kind of naturally gravitates towards embers uh, and um, says, Actually, hold on. Uh, when they were still at a distance, they would have made some hand signals, I think, towards Embers. Does mm-hmm. Embers speak the sign I, language I do. that Tabaxi do? Um, she does have a common sign. Okay. Um, so yeah, they would have made like some Tabaxi hand gestures at you, and there's like tail flicks involved with mm-hmm. that as well. Um, just to like say, at a distance, say, hello! Mm-hmm basically greetings and things like that mm-hmm. yeah and I'll, I'll like uh, express kind of the same uh, greetings uh, good to see travelers on the road etc and explain to the others um, this is sort of at the back reading um, that's silent so it's not to start or whatever that we're doing. it's fascinating I've never yeah. seen anything like it before yeah. great. and then when they draw close that um, elderly chestnut brownford one kind of comes up to embers and says hi you're a fine looking group of travelers i I assume this is your clan (laughs) uh no no clan for me Uh, these are my 
That's a shame. My uh, compatriots and friends, employers. <laughs> and kind of cocks his head a little bit, uh, and then gestures towards his traveling companions and says, "Well, we're uh, we're the bright, bright tundra clan. Um, this is my partner, Flower that grows tall. Uh, I'm rustling of a deer. Uh, our son, Flash of White Lightning, and uh, his daughter, Sun Dappled Glade." Was it grappling with a deer? Uh, <laughs> rustling of a deer. Yeah, okay, I, like, I was no. like, what am I hearing here? Can you say all four of those mm-hmm. again? Rustling of a deer, or deer for short. Flower that grows, or flower that grows tall, or flower for short. Flash of white lightning, or flash for short. Mm-hmm. And sun dappled glade, glade for short. Uh, this is uh, uh, Eppin's Wiseacre, uh, and uh, what what persona are you in right now? I was just thinking about that. <laughs> Rook. Uh, this is uh, Rook, and uh, Lady Eppin Evans. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. You don't see many small groups traveling up and down these roads. It's a lot of merchants and caravans and things of the like. But we've we've walked these roads for for years, back and forth, traveling to different places along them. Where are you coming from this time? Oh, we went as far as the edge of the Spellscar Desert, and wow. now we're, we've turned around and we're heading back. Any news from the north? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, his partner kind of chimes in, like chuckles, and then chimes in and says, well, <laughs> we don't, we don't step much into settlements and things, so we wouldn't have much news you'd be interested in. You might be surprised I'm interested in natural world news, too. Well, uh, there, there was some strangeness with giant ants up there in the middle of Ardlir. That was interesting, but they seemed they'd cleared out by the time we came back. You, by the last time you came here, things may have been pulled a bit through. That's also oh, yes. been cleared. It's part of why we left. Uh, you'll find the going south much easier than you may remember. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he kind of nods. Um, you can uh, actually roll an insight check. Mm-hmm. Whoever wants to. No, I'm say it. I'm gonna use my advantage. I rolled one better than I normally do. Your inspiration. For, yeah, my yes. yes. One better than I said. Timing up when you say secret squad. When you're staring oh. at a secret squad. It's basically with natural 20. Nice. Oh, there you go. Um, 19. 23. 18. <laughs> so. You've been. So far, rustling of a deer and flower that grows tall have been doing most of the talking. Um, flash of white lightning has been. Almost like sulking in the back. What, what what did you roll? 19. 19, okay, so you're both pretty high. You can both basically get these results. Um, flash of white lightning. Uh, it's like the orange orange and white fur with yellow eyes. Um, looks as if he hasn't groomed himself in a while. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, his fur looks very like unkempt and a little bit like matted. Um, and he's kind of like hanging back and yeah, like almost sulking. Mm-hmm. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Sun Dappled Glade, the young uh, 20-ish year old uh, Calico one with the green eyes, um, has basically like for this, you kind of get the impression like her grandpas do this a lot, <laughs> like stop to talk to travelers. Uh, so like she has sat down on a rock off the side of the road and pulled out something that she's fiddling with. Um, yeah, I'll go up to Glade. Mm-hmm. And I'll ask, uh, what is it this year? Oh, uh, yeah, and she, she holds up a box. Um, and you can see in the box it's got, like, all these wires and electronics. It's like, it's a mechanical device of some kind. And she says, this is something called a sending wire. or It's, it's part of the mechanism, for one. It's, um, you can send signals over long distances. 
I've been trying to figure out how it works. I've been trying to like take it apart and put it back together and make it work on my own. <laughs> Please narrate for our audience what just happened. Uh, Bert <laughs> just kind of subconsciously starts gravitating towards this technology. I feel like I'm like holding the conversation. Bert's neck like extends. Yeah, like, it's like changelings <laughs> wrap. Slowly having to hold this conversation by myself as these guys. Yeah, are. and like, what you got there? <laughs> But, uh, he like, yeah, she he kind of, already, like, already has his tools in his hand. He gives you the same explanation, and she's, oh, do you, and she, like, pulls up some Tinkerer's tools, too. Do you, do you work with these sorts of things, too? I sure do. It's, it's my obsession this year. Oh, my gosh. Tell me about it. But the year's almost half over, and I still haven't figured it out. It's driving me crazy. Can I take a look? She, um, she holds it Just in her hand look. and says, okay, but if you figure it out, don't tell me. Okay. And she like gives you the, the box. Alright. What do you want me to look for? Just roll like your your tools check with intelligence. I will use my intelligence. Yeah. You will, won't you? Um You can't stop it. Wouldn't it? I wouldn't try. You know he's gonna do what he's gonna do. I don't regret saying that because it's really funny, but <laughs> it is <laughs> uh, and then that's good. Mm -hmm. And Flash of Genius. It's uh, Flash of White Lightning. Uh, yeah, I'll call Flash of White Lightning with me. So what's our purpose? He's three? Is yeah. that right? Yeah, so that's 21. 21, okay. Yeah, you're able to kind of like poke around in there and like you can you can kind of see what she's doing wrong and you think you know probably how this thing works. I mean, it's basically like um, she's got like a part of a telegraph mm -hmm. sort of thing here, like a telegraph wire. Um, and so yeah, she, there's like a like a, a button she could tap to like send a signal, that sort of thing. I see. Yeah. All if right. she could get it to work, but she hasn't quite got the mechanics and electronics of it working just right. And you think you see the problem. Okay. Um, but she said not to tell her. Mm -hmm. So I'll respect that and say, okay, do you, you don't want she, a hint either, right? No, no, please nothing, no. Nothing, okay. Um, but you can see that she she is pretty close to figuring okay. it out. There's only a few things that she needs to tweak, and then she'll probably have it. Okay. Well, very cool. Hand it back. Here. Gotta figure it out um, before, what is it, Stagnant Eve? Mm -hmm. That's what it's called? Mm -hmm. Gotta figure it out before Stagnant Eve. By yourself? Well, yeah, I mean, ideally, yeah. I mean, if I can't right. figure it out... Before Stagnant Eve itself, maybe I'll try and get some help, but... Okay. Well, um, you know, reach out to me and Amber Heart if you uh, send a message to Drake or something, and we can talk if you want. Yeah, she kind of she, she, like, shakes her head back and forth and says, Well, we don't really have a messenger Drake, and we never really go into cities, but... <laughs> or we have access to the sending spell, so I mean, I could just... I could just send you before the Eve and... She kind of looks at you and says, I'll tell you what. If you can't get the sending wire to work, then use the sending wire to contact him. She doesn't understand if you're joking or not. She kind of like <laughs> opens her mouth to object uh -huh. and then looks to Vert. Yeah. As if, as if like, is she serious? <laughs> no. Amber's is clearly No. No. Right, 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 right. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, th th thanks for the offer. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll get it to work though. That, or I could write you a note to what I think it is, and you just don't have to open it until, or give you hints. Maybe, you hints. maybe you could do that and give it to my grandpa, Let's and he that. can hold on Let's to it that. until stagnant eve. Okay, so I'll just like find a piece of paper and I'll write like the solution to the problem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and you can you can slip that to either flower that grows tall or a rustling of a deer. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and I think I would ask like in sign instead of out loud. Uh, what's wrong with the child? Oh no, it's um, it's her dad. Oh, it's her dad. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, she gets kind of a sad. Yeah, she's the child. Um, she gets a sad look on her face, um, and then signs back to you. Well, 
his um his mate passed away and he hasn't quite been the same since i mean it hasn't been very long i'm 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 still dealing with it too but he he took it hard sorry and i think she sniffs but you won't find anyone like this <laughs> no and he, not with his current obsession either he's um he's a little bit fixated on beekeeping which uh amazing is i'm sure that's not going to help let's see yeah wow. and as you kind of look over to his backpack you can see he's got like a small hive strapped <laughs> oh to his backpack god. what a buzzkill oh my god did he meet uh, charm nope. nope that would explain a lot i wrote this i wrote this encounter before charm <laughs> actually because they just came from the spells right? yeah that's true well Maybe next year, then. Maybe next year his obsession will be grooming. Mm. <laughs> it's okay though. I mean, we're, we're all we're all giving him a pass because he took it hard. This is all happening with like hand gestures mm -hmm. and tail flicks and like ears moving back and forth and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ellen is just championing Ron with the small talk with the uh okay. um <laughs> with rustling of a deer. Hold on, let me let me look at what they're into right now. Um rustling of a deer. Basically the topic turns to the sorts of things that they are interested in right now. <laughs> and rustling of a deer, basically after your like really, you know, like polite conversation, like rustling of a deer is really taken to you and he just says, You know, I must write you a poem. And uh, he like pulls out paper and pen and like starts to write. Um, and flowers that or flower that grows tall kind of like rolls his eyes and says, "While he's doing that," uh, and he like reaches into uh, his his little satchel and pulls out a deck of worn cards and says, "I've been trying to learn fortune telling." Oh. Oh boy. That's fascinating. Would, would you care for a draw, a reading? I, absolutely, yes. I Mind, I'm not very good at it yet. <laughs> but I'm working. I'm happy to be your guinea pig. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Ethan just pulled a giant box of tarot cards? Oh, did you get the thing? I did get the thing. Oh, man. Oh, man. The thing. What is this thing? Which I did say. I can't even see because the laptop screen's in the way. This is the one? This is the one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he pulls out a deck of very worn cards and kind of sets them oh, no, on the table thing. and says, Now, I'm going to need you to set your intention with the deck. We need to think about a question, something you want to know, something about your past you wish to know more about, or your. Uh, a present quandary or a, a, a future something that weighs on your mind for the future what do you want to know mm, too much oh my gosh <laughs> ethan's actually gonna do it reading here mm -hmm. we're gonna try all right so how do i do this just so you touch the deck and you set your intention by asking the question out loud <laughs> It doesn't have to be out loud. But, but for as a DM, you need to know. Yeah. Um, does it need to be a yes or no question, or can it be no any question? Now mind, the answer you will get back might be circuitous, and it might not be what's expected. And like I said, I'm not very good at this yet. Anyways. All right, all right. Why not? Um, where is my mother? Oh. An interesting question. Uh, so then if you can sort of shuffle the deck and kind of um, cut it how you want, just kind of get it till it feels good to you. This feels familiar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then once you're ready, um, he Those takes it and says, I'm going to draw three cards. All right. 
and we'll look at them in turn. All right. Flips over the first one and reads, Ah, the warrior. An interesting first pull. Uh huh. My book here is going to take me a minute <laughs> to flip through. Um, the warrior card. Now, this card is a representation of, of physical strength, and fighting acumen. Now, it can refer to a, a person or a situation, any one of these various things, but that's the general meaning of the card. Okay. Oops, over a second card and says, the tree in the reversed position. I need to bookmark this page. <laughs> There's so many pages in the book. Tree. There we go. The tree card suggests um, the perseverance in difficult circumstances. As you can see, it's it's sprouting from a wall, a crumbling wall. The tree is flourishing. Situation. But in the reverse position, very interesting. We'll come up that one too, and we'll come back to it in a moment. And then he flips over a third card and says, The Maze. <laughs> so many pages in my book. <laughs> the Maze, there we go. Spence is killing us. And uh, on the card, or on the card, you can see sort of a picture of like a figure wandering amongst a maze made of walls of cards. Is that figure a druid? It's like a druid to me. <laughs> mm, it looks more like Vert, actually. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> get me out of here. Uh, and In the Feywild. His He's brow kind of furrows as he draws that one, and he says, Now, the maze represents being lost or wandering. Those who draw this card are often lost themselves. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of looks at them as a whole and says, now these, these might touch on something in your past, they might touch on something in your present that relates to the question you asked, or something in the future. It's very, very subjective. And he looks at the warrior and says, oh, now the warrior, it could be could be a person who's who's fought in battles or who has combat training. Perhaps your mother is one such person. It could be a place, uh, a fort, or some location where warriors or people of physical strength gather. Or it could be that something about your mother's situation requires skilled application physical force. There's some element of that involved in the question you asked. And he kind of turns to the tree. There it is. Um, and he looks at the tree in the reverse position and he says, ah, in the reverse position, this is dire circumstances. It suggests persevering in difficult circumstances, but in the reversed position, it means well, it could be someone barely hanging on in hostile conditions, someone in trouble. Or it could be a place where nature refuses to grow. An overwhelming threat against a small and isolated location or, or individual. It is not a positive meaning in the, in the reverse. And then he looks at the maze and says, now, the maze is someone who feels lost in their own life, unsure how to create the change that they desire, or a, a person with a wandering mind. It could mean an actual maze, a labyrinth, a place with many twists and turns where one could easily be lost, or it could be just a situation, somewhere where there are numerous factors at play that overwhelm and confuse. And he kind of looks up at you with bright eyes and said, Did that help? Did that clarify anything? I think in the fraction of a second, 
that it takes Ellen to kind of compose herself before she realizes that he's looking at her. Mm -hmm. She looks actually extremely troubled by what she just heard and like unable to mask that for just a second. But then she notices, she sees his excitement and she quickly shakes herself out of it. She says, that was, I think, very enlightening. You're better than you think you are. Well, that's good to hear because I don't get much practice with these <laughs> points around at the rest of his clan. I but think I, I've been working on it. That, that's, the meanings get so complicated. And there's so many of them. Well, there's a lot of room for interpretation, too. Yeah, he nods. <laughs> you have to be able to read people pretty well, I think. But that was very good. Thank you. You're quite welcome. And then uh, Rustling of a Deer finishes with a flourish, <laughs> uh, the poem that he was working on. Uh, and he uh, hands it to a uh, flower that grows tall to kind of like hold up. And then he looks at it out of the side of his <laughs> eye and then he stands and he begins to basically perform. Like as he's reading words from the sheet, this like poem about you and about how you walk through nature and you know, the, the like the brightness of your spirit and things like that. He is reciting a separate poem in these kind of the sign of the tabaxi with his, his hands and his ears and his tail. That's a really cool. Yeah. Wow. Can we recruit these people to I know. actually like <laughs> Tuffy has surreptitiously gone up to Flash and trying to groom <laughs> like oh, she does. <laughs> Like she does to embers, which is she's just very troubled that he's looking so uncomfortable. Um, are you using like press the detection or something? Whatever it takes. Are you are you being sneaky about this? Nope. Nope. Okay. Incredible. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I looked at embers first because she enjoyed it. Yeah, he's um. So. Like, you fly over to him, and he kind of gives you this, like, almost this, like, like, he looks at you, but his eyes look a little bit dead. Um, like, there's not a lot of light or life in his eyes, and he sees you come up. Brush off. <laughs> um, he sees you come up, and you try and, like, start grooming him. He just kind of, like, I think absentmindedly, like, swats at you, like you're a, a big bug or something. He just says, stop that! Stop! What are you, what are you doing? kind of gives you a look and you can see that actually like there's a bit of light in his eyes but it's an angry light but it's there <laughs> ah. uh see my friend embers over there so it nods she actually enjoys this so i just thought a little grooming might calm me down you seem so sad <laughs> roll a persuasion check <laughs> for tuppence charm Ooh. Persuasion. That is a 24. Okay. Um, he, like, he looks like he's about to, like, have an angry outburst at you. But he kind of, like, lets out a sigh and then closes his mouth and says, Well, it did feel nice. Fine. Fine. Groom away. <laughs> he kind of, like, uh, lowers his head so you can like get at his ears and stuff. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pass my inspiration to Tuffy for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And with that, unless there's anything else you want to talk about with the Bright Tundra Clan, mm -hmm. um, they're happy to just kind of spend some time chatting with you mm -hmm. before you both end up kind of going your opposite directions. Unless we can persuade them to come back this way so we can have some company. No, I'll just say, like, the next time you're heading north, if you want to stop by Amber Hearth, if we have a keep up there, you're welcome to come and drop in and we'll <laughs> treat you to a good meal. Well, I don't know what. It's on the outskirts of the city. You so you don't even have to go into the city. Probably. Yeah, they, they kind of nod when you say that and says, okay, mm -hmm. all right, well, if it's on the outskirts. Uh... And some great, great nestling nooks to sleep in. I'm about touring. We'll probably be there. Yeah. No, we'll be there. We just might take you up on that then. Happy travels. Yeah. 
Right, and they they kind of set off, and um, yeah, Sun Double Glade puts away the like <coughs> sending wire device. Um, with the buzzing of bees, <laughs> <laughs> flash of white lightning's backpack. Slightly they take off. Yeah. How does how does that guy look after the grooming? Is he just like um, muting the beast like when the beast? Like, <laughs> I think Tuppence probably did like one side of him, but didn't get the other. Uh, we went together for real. So he's like oh, half playing. Some intricate braids. Just I was hoping you'd have all those like you know curls. <laughs> Ruffles. Yeah. Like the beast. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, and with that. Um, you make your way north, uh, other than that, rather uneventfully, to Fymir, yeah. Uh where, unless there's anything you want to do in the city, you kind of come inside of its uh, big stone walls with, I think it's got, like, stone giant statues built into the walls and things like that, if I recall correctly. Um, you come inside of Fymir, and uh, within the first gate, there's kind of a train station right near there. Um, but the train station you want for going out of the city is a little bit of a ways into the city. If there's anything you want to do while you're there. Um, just so that we don't have to spend a flashback on this at some point. Um, we were given the names of some guards, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, who you're going to impersonate? Yeah. Actually, what would have happened, and I should have mentioned this earlier, is basically... Uh, the clouder would have given you the name of a contact who will meet you in Grey Barrow. Okay. And okay. will help you go over your identities. Okay. Because um, because what I want to do is kind of use the hat of disguise mm. to like show the other three, especially you, because you're going to be casting seeming, mm -hmm. what we need to look like. Okay. You probably could have gotten descriptions. Um, so I will give you the descriptions, but I won't tell you much about them just yet. Um, do you want to use those disguises for our trip to Grey Barrow? No, no. Um, later on when we cast Seeming, uh -huh. in order for you to know exactly how to sculpt the illusion, I'm mm -hmm. using the how to disguise to like, this one looks like this, and change it to that person. Uh -huh. This one looks like this, etc., etc. So you have like a very clear picture. And so but I'm, I'm not going to use, you know. The plan... Well, yes, this is something we'll yeah. probably discuss when we get to mm -hmm. Grey Barrow. Um, but I thought the plan was to use seeming on the train so that no one recognized us mm. on the train to yeah, get in, and then. Too. But I'm not sure. Oh, maybe so. Because you can use your hat and you can change how you look, and the two of us can hide. Yeah. When we get into the prison itself. Yeah. And actually, I'm not sure the more that I think about it, the less. Yeah, because you're meeting the contact in Grey Barrow who's got mm -hmm. the identities for you, so I don't think you would know yet what they look like. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. Yeah. So I thought the yeah, I thought the seeming plan was just as a way to, to okay. look non descript yeah. on the train in Fineir because people at Fineir know what we look like and mm -hmm. we're also pretty Yeah. We were in a newspaper or something. Yeah. So I guess like before we enter Fineir we'd probably cast seeming. Well, it's only good for eight hours, so I'm not sure how long the train ride is, but yeah. The train ride is probably going to be like around eight hours. Or yeah, so. so it's a long right. it's a long train ride across country. And up a mountain. So. Okay. All right then. Um, if you want to, like, say, you spent a couple hours in Fymir, it can be a viable location for a flashback, though. So, yeah. Um, you spend a little bit, not too long in Fymir, just long enough that you could flash back here mm -hmm. if you needed. Mm -hmm. Check um, out to see if there's any new part. books. From oh. New Heartwood books. On sale oh. at a bookstore. Uh, no, because she <laughs> she debuted one at the um, at the con. That That's would have been right. the big one for the year. Yeah. So, um, but you could yeah. pick up some books for the train. <laughs> I never did tune into the podcast. Oh, I think we meant we did. Oh, we did. Or we mm -hmm. said we were going to. Yeah, yeah. With your radio. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and yeah, you get on one of the trains from kind of what is Fymir's biggest train station. Um, it's called Venture Station, mm -hmm. and that's the one that has an outgoing train out of the city. Um, and when you get there, there's this big steam engine waiting there, kind of in, um, you know, in the station between these two raised platforms. And there's all kinds of people, um, you know, dressed in all sorts of various different ways, uh, kind of queued up in front of the different uh, 
you know, cars of the train and you've got tickets, uh, you know, for one of those cars. Uh, and so with the scene of you all boarding the train, I think that's probably where we'll end today's episode. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Next stop, Grey Barrel. Grey Barrel! Um, thank you all for playing. Thank you to everyone who tuned in to watch. We'll be more. We'll be back with more of this Monday, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Hope to see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.